Today we're talking about this color change LED panel that you see right here, and we'll show you a little close up of that here in a minute. But before we get to that, I thought I would show you a little bit about the circuit and the components and the PCB. So here's the PCB on the top. We've got where all the components go and there's no traces on the top. And this has 50 LEDs and 50 resistors that we're gonna solder up. So this would make a perfect kit if you're just learning to solder or you enjoy soldering and you're just looking for a project where you can solder a lot of different components and have a nice little design in the end. On the back side, you'll see this is where all the traces are. There's a micro USB connector on the one side, and then I'm also going to include a screw terminal in case you want to wire directly through that screw terminal. And then there's also a couple giant pads in the middle here for 5 volts and ground if you just want to permanently solder in a power supply. This board is designed to run off of a standard USB power supply, just anything that you would have that you'd be using for charging a cell phone or a tablet will work just fine. Now, all the components are through-hole components with the exception of this USB connector here on the side. Now, I'll go ahead and pre-solder this on for you. I know it can be a little bit intimidating having such small components like that, but it's no big deal. So this will come with that component already soldered on so that you won't have to worry about it. And then you'll just have the through-hole components. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of the components and then we'll talk about how this get soldered up. All of the components will come in a little bag like this and everything's already organized and pre-counted for you. So let's just pour these out. We've got some resistors and these are going to be either 220 or 330 ohm resistors. There's not a big difference between the two. It includes this screw terminal and this is completely optional. If you're going to power it directly from USB, then there's no need for that, but I included it anyway. Then there's a bag of slow flash LEDs and I've included 52 LEDs. The board uses 50. And then I'm including this little guy right here and this is just a little battery that you can use to test the LEDs. Now you may notice there's a little jab hole in the plastic and that's because I wanted to test each of these batteries to make sure they weren't dead before I shipped them out. So that way you know that you're going to get a battery that works. So these are going to be the components and then I would recommend that you get some type of a small little container to pour everything in. Otherwise you'll end up having LEDs everywhere. For the sake, I'm going to use this little tray that I've printed from my 3D printer and it's the perfect size for it. So let's talk a little bit about these components and how they get added in. I've just got a couple of each of the components here as an example. Now, one of the things that you'll notice when you pull the resistors off of that little bandolier, there's a lot of glue on the ends and they'll tend to stick to things. Now, one thing you can do is you can just take a pair of scissors and cut the tips off so that they don't all stick to each other. Uh, it's completely up to you. And then here's the battery. Now, I'm the reason I included the battery is, is that you, so that you could test the LEDs before you solder them in. The worst thing that can happen is you get a bad LED. And I wasn't able to test each and every one of these LEDs, which is why I included a couple extras. Now these LEDs do matter which direction they go in. There's going to be a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is going to be the positive and the short lead is going to be the negative. Now the reason for the battery is so that you can test these LEDs in advance. So if you just put the LED over the battery with the long lead on top and the short lead on the bottom, you'll see that it starts to cycle through the colors. I highly recommend testing each one for two reasons. One, you can weed out any bad LEDs in case you get one. And the other is it just can verify the polarity so that you remember which side is which. Now on the board itself, it is laid Labeled, which ones are the short and which ones are the long or the negative and the positive. So the flat side is going to be the short lead or the negative. So as you'll see, I've got the short lead on the top. That's going to go in just like this. Now I would recommend pushing the LEDs all the way down to the surface of the board so that they sit flush. But before we get to the LEDs, what you're going to want to do is solder in each of these resistors. Now to solder these resistors in, all you need to do is take them, completely fold them in half like this so that they're relatively close to where the component is. And then we're just going to slide that in. Now these do are not polarized. So these can go in either direction. It doesn't really matter. But what most people will do is they'll line up the colors accordingly so that all the colors are the same way. Now for those that are getting the 220 ohm, the colors are going to be red, red, black, black, brown. And those with the 330 are going to be orange, orange, black, black, brown. So ideally what you would do is you would line up all all of the, for example, the reds on the left and the browns on the right. And you can just put each one of these in. And if you'd like, you can either do them one at a time or you can put all of them in at once and then flip it over and solder it. I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples. So we're gonna put two LEDs in, flip it over, 
laid on a flat table so that it's nice and sturdy and you can give these a little tug so that they're nice and flush with the board and then we're just going to apply a little bit of solder on each of these now i'm not, not going to walk you through the specific technique for soldering you can find all kinds of youtube videos about that uh, but i do want to show you how the components went in after you've soldered in all of the resistors, you can now move on to the LEDs. And again, we want to test each of these LEDs before we put them in. So we're just going to verify that they light. And then we're going to put them in with the short lead on the flat side. And we're going to push it all the way down to the bottom of the board. And again, we're going to test the next one. And we're going to continue this process. Now what you can do is you can put them all in if you would like and then solder them all at once. But the problem with that is when you go to tip it over, it can be difficult to do it without knocking all of them out. So I would recommend doing maybe five or ten at a time, either on a row or a column. That way if you end up bumping the board and they all fall out, you haven't really lost a whole lot of time and effort on that. Once you flip these over, you can give these just a little bit of a splay too so that they don't move and go ahead and give them a solder. One thing that I do, and this is completely up to you, is I'll solder just one side of each of the resistors in the LEDs, and then I'll flip it over and make sure they're laying flat. And if they're not flat, you can take your finger and hold the LED or the resistor on one side, and then heat that one leg up and adjust it accordingly. It's a lot more difficult to adjust if you solder both of the leads in, and then you find out that's a little bit crooked. Now on this particular board, it, you will notice one that's kind of crooked, so I would be extra careful to get them all all lined up just right. So that's how you're going to organize the board and how you're going to solder each of the components in. As I mentioned, the USB will already be soldered on, so you don't need to worry about that. And then if you do want to use this screw terminal, you can solder that either on the front or the back. Just note which side is the 5 volts and which side is the ground. I did design this to be soldered in on the back, so in this case you would put the component in here and then solder it on the front. And in that case, it's got it's very well labeled which side is 5 volts and which side is ground. If you did want to solder on the front, you go right ahead, just go ahead and transfer which is the 5 volts and which is the ground to the front side. And that's all there is to it. Once you get everything soldered in, you'll be able to use either of the three power options, the micro USB, the screw terminal, or these two pads on the back to light up your entire panel. Now, if you want to use your own LEDs, you're more than welcome to, but keep in mind that each of these LEDs is running in parallel. So they each have their own resistor and they're each running at five volts. So make sure you compensate accordingly if you happen to use a completely different LED. Using a 220 or a 330 ohm resistor will accommodate most standard LEDs. But because they're all in parallel, that also means you can change different types of LEDs on the same board without having an issue. If these had been in series, you would need to match them up. But because they're all in parallel, you could do, for example, solid colors, or you could use some blink LEDs in one row, color change in another, and so on. Or you could just randomly pick them throughout. You could even do a solid color if you're interested in that. I don't know if you'd have as cool of an effect with just an all red or an all blue, uh, but you definitely can use kind of whichever LEDs that you want. These kits are going to be included with the slow flash LEDs. And the reason for that is they create a really neat effect and they're not really distracting. So now that we've talked about the board, the components, the circuits, and the uh, soldering layout, let's go ahead and turn our attention over to the final product and I'll explain a little bit on how the LEDs light and get started. Each kit comes with these little 3D printed feet or stands so that it'll stand up at a nice angle. I've got some rubber feet on the bottom of this just so that these don't scratch the desk. And note when you do cut these leads off, they are extremely sharp. So just be aware of that. You don't want to set it down on something that might scratch. Now here's a final version of the board. And what I wanted to show you is when you first plug it in, you're going to notice that they're all going to be the same color. And that's because they're all going to start off as red. But what's going to happen is, is they're slowly going to change colors. And you can see they're starting to change colors now. And they're still pretty in sync. But over time, just due to variations in the manufacturing process, each of these will have an ever so slightly different timing. And after about four or five cycles, you'll notice they're out of sync and you just have all different colors. This is particularly noticeable when it goes from that final transition of blue back to red. So now you'll see as it starts to shift, a couple of them are still blue and before they go completely red. And you'll see here as we, the longer it goes, the more it becomes out of sync. So I'll let this run for a minute or so, and then I'll come back and show you how they're all out of sync. 
It's been running for about a minute and you can see all the colors are all over the place. The LEDs have really started to diverge substantially. You can see some of them are red, some of them are blue, some of them are still white and we've got some oranges in here as well. And that's exactly how it's supposed to be over a period of time. It will continue to shift in and out of phase, and it just gives you a really neat effect. Now, again, this is designed five by seven to fit into a picture frame, or you can use these 3D printed feet, which I will include if you wanted to stand it up. It might also make for a great wall art if you wanted to build a custom frame and hang it up. I also think a nice little diffusion panel on the front would be really neat. You'll diffuse a lot more of those colors and you'll have a lot more variety. So that's the project. I think if you're a novice at soldering or you really enjoy soldering and are just getting into it, this project is probably gonna take you about an hour, maybe a little bit more to complete. Now, in addition to soldering it, you obviously wanna trim all the leads off on the back side. And what I do is I take some about 90% isopropyl alcohol and clean up all the flux residue. Now with a board like this, because there's no real sensitive components on it, what you can do is you can clean all those solder joints off and then you can use a little toothbrush to brush them and then you can run it under some water and some soap and get the last bit of that residue off. Just make sure it's nice and dry before you plug it in so that you don't get a shock, but also so the components don't uh, get any uh, water stuck behind them. But it's a great little project and if you have any questions feel free to hit me up. Uh, I think this is going to be a real cool project for kids that are interested in soldering, but maybe don't have the patience for building some of the very intricate kits that you can find online today. So with that, if you have any questions, let me know.